Sunlight poured into the kitchen through the windows, filling the quiet room with a warm glow. It was the kind of day perfect for a leisurely stroll or meeting friends for a late breakfast at a trendy new cafe. But Mary stood still by the counter, absent-mindedly stirring her coffee. Her thoughts were far from the peaceful morning mood, stuck in memories of yesterday's fight with Richard. Another fight. Another evening of harsh words and disappointment. Their relationship, once full of love and tenderness, had turned into a series of unresolved conflicts. Moments of joy had now been replaced by tense conversations, filled with hidden resentment and irritation. Somewhere along the way, Mary had begun to drift away, finding solace in the arms of another. Standing there, she replayed the echoes of their last argument over and over in her mind. Richard had come home late, distant, and withdrawn. Mary had tried to make contact, but their attempt at a conversation quickly fell apart. Accusations flew, voices were raised, and soon it felt like the walls were vibrating from their shouting. Beneath all the anger, Mary felt an overwhelming sadness. This wasn't the life she had imagined when she married Richard. This wasn't the future she had dreamed of. The ringing of her phone snapped her out of her thoughts. Glancing at the screen, her heart skipped a beat when she saw the name. Charlie. Her lover. The man who had brought joy back into her life, becoming her escape from the coldness of her marriage. She quickly opened the message. Good morning, beautiful. I can't stop thinking about last night. When can I see you again? A slight smile touched her lips as she typed a brief reply. Soon. Richard's causing trouble, but I'll find a way. As soon as the message was sent, a wave of guilt washed over her. The relationship with Charlie was thrilling, but it came with a constant sense of remorse that gnawed at her day after day. Yet despite that, she couldn't bring herself to end it. Charlie made her feel wanted in a way Richard hadn't for years. Just as she slipped her phone back into her pocket, Richard walked into the kitchen. His presence immediately filled the room. Tall and broad-shouldered, Richard exuded the same strength that had once drawn her to him. His dark, slightly tousled hair and the stubble on his chin gave him an almost dangerous look. He leaned against the counter, his eyes narrowing as they met hers. Who are you texting? he asked, his voice even but laced with suspicion. Mary's heart raced, but outwardly she remained calm. Just a friend, she replied casually, turning away from him and raising the cup to her lips. She prayed he wouldn't press further. But she could feel his gaze, heavy, scrutinizing her every move. The silence in the room thickened, the tension palpable. She could sense Richard watching her closely, waiting for any misstep, any hint. Her fingers tightened around the cup as she fought the urge to turn around. Are we going to do this every morning, Richard? She asked tiredly, finally meeting his gaze. She took another sip, hoping it would calm her nerves. Richard didn't respond right away. He just stared at her, his piercing blue eyes seemingly trying to read her thoughts to uncover all the secrets she had carefully hidden. His silence, his tension sent a chill down her spine. She had grown used to the atmosphere of distrust in their home, but it still unsettled her, the way he could stand there so calmly on the outside, while inside, a storm was clearly brewing. I'm leaving, she said abruptly, setting down the cup and grabbing her keys. She couldn't stand his gaze any longer. Where are you going? Richard spoke quietly but with barely contained anger. Out, she answered shortly, offering no explanation. She didn't care anymore if her response only fueled his suspicions. She needed to get out, to escape the suffocating tension that had engulfed their home. Richard didn't try to stop her. He remained in place, his posture tense as Mary walked past without saying a word. His face revealed nothing, and the silence that hung between them was far more unsettling than any argument could have been. Stepping outside into the cool morning air, Mary took a deep breath trying to shake off the feeling of unease that clung to her like a second skin. Though she had physically left the house, the weight of Richard's suspicions seemed to still press down on her 
as if his gaze was following her from afar. She forced herself to focus on the day ahead, especially on the thought of meeting Charlie. Once in the car, she started the engine, but the nagging sense that everything was about to change wouldn't leave her. Mary glanced back at the house, half expecting to see Richard watching her from behind the curtains. But the windows remained still, and the house looked as calm and ordinary as ever. It was a serene mask, hiding the storm brewing inside. With a quiet sigh, Mary pulled out of the driveway, temporarily leaving the tension behind, though she knew it would catch up to her sooner or later. The moments of peace didn't last long. Charlie was waiting for her at their usual spot, a secluded cabin deep in the woods, far from prying eyes. The cabin stood old and solitary, blending into the surrounding trees as if time had forgotten it. It was their refuge, a place where the outside world ceased to exist and they could escape into their own reality. As Mary drove down the narrow, winding dirt road leading to the cabin, a familiar mix of anticipation and guilt stirred within her. Stepping out of the car, she heard the gravel crunch beneath her feet as she walked toward the entrance. The air was thick with the scent of pine and damp earth, and with each step, her life with Richard seemed to fade away, leaving only the expectation of seeing Charlie. Before she could knock, the door swung open. Charlie stood in the doorway, his smile warm and welcoming, making her heart race. Tall and fit, he had a ruggedness that sharply contrasted with Richard's refinement. His tousled brown hair and dark, expressive eyes lit up at the sight of her. Mary, he said softly, pulling her inside with a gentle but insistent urgency. As the door closed behind them, Charlie embraced her, his lips finding hers in a deep, passionate kiss. Mary melted into him, her fingers tangling in his hair, responding to the kiss with equal fervor. Here, in Charlie's arms, nothing else mattered. All the anxieties, lies, and guilt vanished in the intensity of the moment. I've missed you, Charlie whispered, his breath smelling faintly of coffee. I've missed you too, Mary murmured, burying her face in his neck and breathing in his familiar, earthy scent. It was the comfort she now relied on in this hidden, tangled part of her life. Charlie pulled back slightly, cupping her face in his hands, studying her with concern in his eyes. You look tired, he said softly. Is everything all right? Mary exhaled, her smile faltering slightly as she nodded. It's Richard. Things are getting worse. Last night was awful. A shadow of tension crossed Charlie's face, his jaw tightening as his thumb gently stroked her cheek. You don't have to stay with him, he said quietly. But there was a firm resolve in his words. We'll get through this together. Mary shook her head, a faint, bittersweet smile playing on her lips. It's not that simple, Charlie. The divorce is going to be messy, and Richard, he's not the kind of man who gives up easily. I have to be careful. Frustration flickered in Charlie's eyes, his expression darkening. I hate seeing you like this, he muttered, trapped in a life that's destroying you. You deserve so much more. Mary lifted her hand and gently touched his lips silencing him. I know, she whispered, but for now, we're here, and that's all that matters. Let's not waste any more time talking about him. Charlie nodded silently and embraced her again. They stood like that for a while, holding each other tightly as if their connection gave them the strength they both needed. After a time, he led her to the worn leather couch in front of the fireplace, where the logs were already crackling filling the room with a soothing warmth. They settled in, her body instinctively leaning into his side, and he wrapped his arm around her shoulders. Time passed relentlessly as they talked, from lighthearted topics to deeply significant ones, work, dreams, funny stories that made them laugh until their sides hurt. In Charlie's company, she forgot about the chaos waiting for her outside these walls. With him, she felt alive again desired, free, feelings she hadn't experienced in years of marriage with Richard. Sunlight streamed through the dusty windows, casting long shadows on the wooden floor, 
and the atmosphere gradually shifted as their conversation grew more serious. Charlie leaned forward, resting his elbows on his knees, a look of concern frozen on his face. Mary, we can't keep doing this, he said softly. Hiding, lying, it's too much for you. I see it in your eyes. She averted her gaze, nervously twisting the silver ring on her finger. I know, she admitted in a barely audible voice. But leaving Richard? It terrifies me. What if he reacts badly? What if he tries to hurt me? Charlie reached out, squeezing her hands firmly. I won't let that happen, he said with certainty. I'll protect you. But you need to make a decision. You can't live between two fires forever. Tears began to glisten in her eyes as she lifted her head to meet his gaze. I'm scared, Charlie. I'm not sure I'm strong enough. You're stronger than you think, he said, gently squeezing her hands. But you need to believe that. Trust me. We'll get through this together. We can put an end to this, but only if you're ready. Mary took a deep breath, feeling the weight of his words. He was right. This affair, this temporary escape from reality, couldn't last forever. Sooner or later, she would have to face the consequences of her actions, and the longer she delayed, the harder it would become. As the sun began to set, casting the cabin in a soft golden light, she realized that their stolen moments were coming to an end. Charlie held her tightly, his arms a shield around her. He won't let you go easily, he warned, his voice serious, his breath warm against her ear. Mary leaned back slightly, looking him directly in the eyes with a determined expression. He won't have a choice, she said with confidence. I'm leaving him. I just need a little more time. Charlie kissed her softly, as if savoring the moment. Be careful, he whispered. He's not someone to underestimate. I will, she promised, her heart pounding as she reluctantly pulled away. I'll be careful. They shared one last lingering kiss before she left the cabin. The door creaked shut behind her as she stepped into the cold, facing the harsh reality of her life. The road home felt endless, her thoughts swirling around Charlie, their uncertain future, and the weight of the decisions ahead. The usual excitement after their meetings was now replaced by an overwhelming sense of anxiety. When she pulled up to the house, the familiar sight of her home brought no comfort. She sat there for a while, gripping the steering wheel tightly as if it could hold her steady, trying to calm the storm of worry raging inside her. Taking a deep breath, she finally got out of the car and walked toward the front door, bracing herself for what awaited her inside. The chilling cold still lingered on her skin as she stepped inside, her cheeks flushed from the night air. The feeling hit her immediately, a strange tension in the air, thick like the silence that filled the room. The house was dimly lit, with only one lamp glowing in the living room, casting faint flickering shadows that stretched ominously across the walls. Mary's heart started to race, an inexplicable sense of dread rising within her. Something was wrong. As she closed the door behind her, Every movement felt deliberately slowed, as if she were trying to buy time, preparing for what was about to happen. Richard was sitting in the living room, his posture frighteningly rigid, his hands clenched tightly on his knees. The TV was off, and there was no book in his hands. He just sat there, motionless, staring into nothingness. His face was partially obscured by shadow. But even from where Mary stood, she could feel the tension radiating from him, a tension that made her stomach tighten. The dread deepened, settling in her chest like a heavy weight. Then, cutting through the thick silence, his voice rang out, cold and sharp. We need to talk. The icy tone of his words was like a slap, devoid of warmth or tenderness, sending a shiver of fear down her spine. She froze, her pulse quickening the pounding of her heart echoing in her ears. About what? She forced herself to ask, though the slight tremor in her voice betrayed her attempt to stay calm. Her fingers shook, and she let her bag drop to the floor. Richard slowly rose from his seat, 
his movements frighteningly measured, as though he were holding something dark and dangerous inside. He was tall, a man with whom she had once felt safe, but now that presence seemed overwhelming, suffocating, even threatening. He turned to face her, his eyes meeting hers, piercing her with a look that made her want to shrink. About us, he said, his voice low but filled with a threatening anger. About you. Her breath caught. This was the moment she had feared, the one she had convinced herself would never come. She had been careful, so sure Richard would never find out. But now his gaze told her everything, he knew. And the betrayal he felt was written all over his face, like a storm barely held back. I know about him, he continued, his voice steady, but with a barely restrained fury lurking beneath the surface. A cold shiver ran down her spine, fear tightening around her like a vice. What are you talking about? She tried to defend herself, her voice tinged with feigned confusion, but the tremor in it gave her away. Don't insult me, Mary, he snapped, his voice rising, each word cutting like a knife. I'm not an idiot. I've seen the messages. I've been watching you. I know everything. Panic washed over her, squeezing her chest like a vice. How had she let this happen? She thought she had been careful, deleting messages, meeting Charlie in places where she thought no one would see. But standing in front of Richard now, she realized how blind she had been. The man she thought was clueless now stood before her, filled with the pain and rage of someone cruelly betrayed. Richard, I... She faltered, struggling to find words, any words, to defuse the situation. No! His voice was sharp, final. I don't want your lies. I want the truth. For a moment, she considered lying again, spinning another story to escape the situation but the expression on his face told her he had reached his limit. There would be no more lies, no more evasion. The truth was already out, and there was no going back. Fine, she said, her voice hardening as a desperate resolve began to rise in her, crossing her arms as if to shield herself from the vulnerability gnawing at her. Yes, I'm seeing someone else, and you know what, I don't regret it. You've made our life unbearable, Richard. You pushed me to this. His face twisted with rage, barely contained, like a storm ready to erupt. Richard's eyes narrowed into sharp slits, his expression dark and menacing. But behind that stern gaze lurked something far more dangerous, a sinister hatred that sent a chill down Mary's spine. You think you're smart, don't you? His words dripped with venom. His voice was low, almost a whisper a growl as he slowly approached her, each step deliberate. His towering figure cast a suffocating shadow over Mary, swallowing her completely. You think you can just leave me after thirty-one years of marriage, is that it? Her heart pounded harder with every beat, fear tightening inside her like a knotted rope. Mary straightened up, mustering all the strength she could. I'm leaving, Richard. I'm done. His laugh cut through the air, sharp and hollow devoid of any warmth or humor. No, Mary, he said coldly, his tone firm and unyielding. You're not going anywhere, not until I deal with him. Her heart skipped a beat. There was no anger in his voice, only a terrifying certainty that frightened her more than any outburst of rage. What do you mean? she asked, her voice trembling with fear. But Richard didn't answer. He simply stood there, staring at her with cold, calculating eyes. Then without a word, he turned and left, his footsteps echoing through the house, leaving her paralyzed with fear and uncertainty. When morning finally came, the anxiety that had churned in Mary's stomach all night still hadn't let go. She had barely slept, haunted by the memory of Richard's cold, emotionless stare and the chilling calm in his voice. Every time she closed her eyes, she saw that same darkness, felt the same unspoken threat hanging in the air. Her hands trembled as she reached for her phone. Her fingers fumbled as she dialed Charlie's number. One ring, two, three. No answer. She hung up and called again, panic rising with each unanswered ring. Voicemail. Charlie, it's me. Please call me back as soon as you get this, she said, her voice tight with fear. It's urgent.
Mary paced the room, each minute dragging on unbearably, her anxiety growing with every moment of silence. The worst scenarios raced through her mind. Had Richard found Charlie? Had something happened to him? By noon, the unbearable weight of uncertainty had become too much. She had to see him, had to make sure he was safe. Grabbing her keys, she rushed out the door, her heart pounding in her chest. The drive to Charlie's house passed in a blur of fear and desperation. She kept glancing at her phone, hoping for a call or a message, anything, but there was nothing. When she finally turned onto his street, her heart sank. His car wasn't in the driveway, and the house looked eerily dark, the curtains tightly drawn. She parked at the curb, gripping the steering wheel so tightly her hands shook, staring at the silent house. It looked abandoned, untouched, as if no one had been there for days. After a moment of hesitation, she forced herself out of the car and hurried to the front door. Her knock echoed in the stillness of the day, but there was no response. Just as she was about to turn and leave, her phone buzzed in her pocket. Startled, she nearly dropped it, fumbling to answer. Relief washed over her when she saw Charlie's name on the screen. Charlie, where have you been? I've been calling you all day. Her voice wavered, a mix of desperation and fear. There was a pause on the other end. When he finally spoke, his voice was shaking with panic. Mary Richard, he's here. Her blood ran cold. What? Where are you? I'm at home, but... His voice suddenly cut off and the line went dead. Charlie! Charlie! Mary's voice was filled with desperation as she screamed into the phone, but the call had already been disconnected. Her heart pounded wildly, panic gripping her as she clumsily tried to fit the key into the ignition. The engine roared to life, and without wasting a second, she sped toward Charlie's house. Fear clouded her thoughts and her mind was overwhelmed with dread. What was Richard doing there? What had happened to Charlie? Her foot pressed hard on the gas pedal, and the scenery around her blurred as she raced against time. When Mary reached Charlie's house, the front door was ajar, swaying slightly as if someone had just hurriedly left. Her pulse pounded in her ears as she nervously approached the entrance, her hands trembling as she pushed the door open wider. The silence inside was oppressive. Only her ragged breathing broke the tomb-like stillness. She froze at the threshold, scanning the dimly lit rooms, every shadow intensifying her fear. Charlie? Her voice barely escaped her lips, soft and shaky, but there was no response. She stepped further inside, the sound of her footsteps echoing in the eerily still house. The last place she checked was the living room. When her eyes fell on Charlie, she froze, gasping in horror. Charlie lay on the floor, his face swollen and bruised, blood trickling down his skin. His body was contorted at unnatural angles, making her knees buckle and her stomach churn with revulsion. Charlie! she screamed, rushing to him, her hands shaking as she reached for his shoulder. Oh God, what happened? He groaned weakly, his eyelids fluttering as he tried to focus on her. Mary. Richard, he did this. His words were faint, slurred, as if each one drained all his strength. Tears streamed down her face as she took in the wrecked room, her mind unable to comprehend the full horror of what had occurred. The furniture was overturned, shards of a broken lamp scattered across the floor, and then her gaze stopped on something in the corner. A metal rod lay discarded like a grotesque trophy, smeared with blood. The sight of it sent a wave of nausea crashing over her. She needed to call for help. Panic gripped her as she fumbled for her phone, her fingers slipping as she dialed 911. Her voice trembled as the operator answered, and she could barely string the words together. Please, someone attacked my friend. He's in bad shape. Her voice wavered, full of fear. After giving the address, the distant sound of sirens cut through the night growing louder with each passing moment. She looked down at Charlie, her heart breaking at the sight of his battered body. I'm so sorry, she whispered, her words soaked with regret. I should have known. I should have protected you. The sirens grew louder, and moments later, police officers burst into the house. 
their weapons drawn, barking sharp, authoritative commands. They pulled her away from Charlie, her desperate screams filling the room as she struggled to break free. Help him, please, he needs help, she cried, her voice trembling with panic. Her pleas were drowned out in the chaos as paramedics rushed to Charlie, their hands moving swiftly trying to save him. At that moment, reality hit her like a heavy blow. Her carefully concealed double life had come crashing down. The fragile balance she had naively tried to maintain was now shattered beyond repair. Guilt and terror weighed on her like an anchor, suffocating her, making it hard to breathe. It had all happened because of her. Her decisions had led to this moment, and now the consequences were far more horrifying than she could have ever imagined. Hours later, the bright sterile lights of the hospital corridor illuminated her coldly. She sat motionless on an uncomfortable plastic chair, her hands still trembling, her gaze fixed on the floor. Her mind was blank, endlessly replaying the night's events like a nightmare from which there was no waking. The police had spoken to her, but the details were blurred, swallowed by the shock and numbness that had taken hold of her mind. All she could focus on was Charlie, lying in that hospital room, barely clinging to life. The image of his battered and bruised body haunted her every thought, replaying with every blink. She never imagined that the affair, once so thrilling in its secrecy, would lead to such a tragic outcome. The wait in the hospital reception felt like an existence in another world. Time stretched infinitely here, each minute dragging on painfully. People sat scattered around the room, all in silence. Families huddled in small groups, whispering to each other. A man nearby sat with his head in his hands. A young woman nervously tapped her foot on the floor. But to Mary, they all seemed to fade away. They were just pale figures against the backdrop of the horror consuming her from within. When the door to the reception creaked open, her head shot up, and her heart pounded wildly in her chest. A doctor in a white coat walked in. His face was drawn and his eyes reflected the weight of bad news. He approached her with a sympathetic expression that twisted her stomach. Are you Mary? he asked, his voice soft but tired, as though he had said these words many times before. Yes, she whispered, barely able to get the word out. She stood up, her legs trembling beneath her. I'm Dr. Murphy, he said, glancing at the tablet in his hands. I'm overseeing Charlie's care. Mary nodded, though her mind was too clouded with fear to process his words. The thudding of her pulse in her ears drowned out all thoughts. How, how is he? She asked, her voice barely audible. Dr. Murphy hesitated, choosing his words carefully. He's in critical condition, he finally said, his tone calm but serious. We've stabilized him for now, but his injuries are very severe. He's lost a lot of blood, and there's significant internal damage. We're doing everything we can, he added, his voice like a fragile thread of hope that seemed too distant to grasp. But the road to recovery will be long. Mary nodded again, though the weight of his words pressed down on her like a suffocating fog. Tears welled in her eyes, and a wave of guilt washed over her. Can I see him? she asked her voice trembling under the strain of her emotions. The doctor's expression softened. He's in the ICU, he explained. He's sedated and on a ventilator. We'll be monitoring him closely over the next 24 hours. You can see him, he continued gently, but only for a short time. Mary swallowed hard, her throat tightening, and managed to whisper, Thank you. Dr. Murphy nodded and led her down the long, sterile hallway toward the ICU. Her footsteps echoed in the empty space, each step bringing her closer to a reality she wasn't prepared to face. When they reached the ICU door, the doctor pointed to a room at the far end. He's in there, he said quietly. Take your time, but remember, he needs rest. Mary nodded once more, her stomach twisting as she approached the door. Her hand hovered over the handle, trembling with fear of what awaited her inside. Taking a deep breath, 
she finally opened the door. The room was dimly lit, and the only sound breaking the silence was the steady beeping of the heart monitor. Charlie lay motionless, his body wrapped in bandages and surrounded by tubes. His face was so pale, so distant from the man she once knew, it was barely recognizable. Although her eyes were closed, the rhythmic rise and fall of his chest, perfectly synchronized with the sound of the ventilator, was impossible to ignore. He seemed so fragile, so breakable, that something inside her was tearing apart. Charlie, she whispered, her voice barely audible as a lump of tears formed in her throat, threatening to take her voice away entirely. She stepped closer, her hand trembling as she touched him. The coldness of his skin seeped into her fingers, causing her to shiver. I'm sorry, she whispered, her voice uncertain and weak. I should have never let it go this far. This is my fault. She hadn't intended for everything to spiral out of control. The guilt pressing against her chest was suffocating. She had convinced herself she could manage it all, the lies, the affair, the deception. But she was tragically, devastatingly wrong. Standing next to him, she felt the full weight of what had happened. The man she had once adored, her husband, had become someone she no longer recognized, someone capable of unspeakable cruelty. Her betrayal had brought them to this point. Charlie had paid the ultimate price, and his blood was on her hands. She stayed with him as long as she could, holding his hand, whispering apologies and silently begging, but it was clear that he could no longer hear her. The machines were keeping his body alive, but the person she loved was gone, locked away somewhere she could no longer reach. A nurse entered the room, gently reminding her that visiting hours were over. Mary nodded, reluctantly letting go of his hand. As she left the hospital, the full weight of her actions bore down on her. The life she once enjoyed, filled with excitement and passion, was now shattered. The future she had imagined with Charlie was slipping away, overshadowed by the darkness of their present. Everything had fallen apart, her marriage, her lover, her sense of self. As she walked through the sterile hospital corridors, feeling as if the walls were closing in on her, Mary realized her world would never be the same again. The next day, Mary was summoned to the police station. She had known this moment was inevitable, understanding that the web of lies she had spun was doomed to unravel. Sitting in the cold, gray interrogation room, across from two detectives, she felt an odd sense of calm. Everything had already collapsed. There was nothing left to hold on to. The lead detective, a middle-aged man with a hard expression softened only by years of experience, leaned forward, his gaze fixed on her. Mrs. Brown, he said, his voice measured but sharp. We've examined the evidence and spoken with your husband. He claims the attack on Charlie was in self-defense. Mary's hands clenched into fists, and anger began to rise in her chest like a flame. Self-defense? she blurted out her voice trembling with fury. He brutally beat Charlie. How can he say that? Every word she spoke was filled with indignation and disbelief. The detective exchanged a brief glance with his younger colleague, a woman who had quietly observed the entire time. Your husband claims Charlie attacked him first, he continued, and that he acted in the heat of the moment. That's a lie! Mary's voice grew louder, shaking with emotion. Richard knew about the affair. He wanted Charlie to suffer. This wasn't self-defense. It was revenge. Silence hung in the air. The tension was so thick it was hard to breathe. The detective studied her face closely, looking for any signs of deceit. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, he spoke again, his tone calm but cautious. We believe you, Mrs. Brown. But without solid evidence, it's his word against yours. Mary's thoughts swirled. Richard had always been so meticulous, always so careful to cover his tracks. He had made sure there were no traces left. But there had to be something, some overlooked detail that would finally expose him for the monster he truly was. I will testify, she declared firmly. 
though a storm of fear raged behind her composed exterior. I will tell everything in court. Richard's manipulations, his threats, everything. The detective gave a slight nod, a flicker of respect passing in his eyes. We'll do everything we can to seek justice, but you need to be ready for a long and grueling fight ahead. This won't be easy. Mary nodded with determination, her resolve growing stronger. She had been foolish to think she could leave Richard without consequences. Now she was certain there was no turning back, no matter how difficult the road ahead would be. As she stepped out of the police station, the cold wind stung her skin, but a strange sense of relief began to settle inside her. The truth had been revealed, and now there was no running away. She would stand her ground until the end, for Charlie, for the life they had dreamed of, and to make sure Richard faced the punishment he deserved for his actions. Yet, despite her growing resolve, a deep emptiness lingered within. The scars from this ordeal would never fully heal. But after a month of legal battles, Mary was unable to prove anything. Richard had an alibi and witnesses who were with him at the time of the crime. Heartbroken, Mary filed for divorce. But she had forgotten that, according to the prenuptial agreement she had insisted on, she would leave the marriage with only what she brought into it. Another month passed, and Mary was forced to look for work. The money she had received after the divorce quickly ran out, and rent still needed to be paid. Only then did Mary realize that she was the one to blame for what had happened. In a desperate state, she sat in her small apartment, sobbing, and repeating the same phrase over and over. It's all your fault. My friend, and this is the end of the story. If you liked this story, then put your royal like and subscribe to the channel. May the force be with you.